Hello and welcome to Thomas Geiger car today with a real special car the future of electric vehicles at least that's what Mercedes claims it to be because today we'll have the first public test drive of the Mercedes EQXX the most efficient electric vehicle on the road until now at least if we're talking about a four-seater of this size a car that was first time shown around the consumer electronics show in Las Vegas earlier that year and that already has undergone intense testing. It drove to Nice, where the brand name Mercedes was born without a single charge, and it drove to the UK, where the Formula One team of Mercedes is based, that committed a lot of its technology into the vehicle, also without a single charge, because this car has a consumption below 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. If you want to know how this car feels, handles and drives that will influence all the future Mercedes EVs, join me on my first test drive and I'll tell you more about it. But before we head behind the steering wheel, let's just have a short walk around and I'll tell you a bit about the size, the shape and the technology underneath that makes this car as efficient as it is. To achieve this efficiency, the car has undergone immense testing in the wind tunnel, making it look like a super fast hypercar, even if it only goes 140 kilometers per hour. But it is really sleek and really slim, and it looks like the next generation AMG GT. To achieve the drag coefficient of 0.17, which is world record for a car of that usability, they have completely covered everything and they guided the air wherever it's possible. So we have the breathers in the bonnet, we have air curtains over wheels that are totally closed and we have a very slim, a very low profile with some additional details that don't have anything to do with the air efficiency but with the energy efficiency Overall, for the first time ever, we have big solar panels on the roof feeding the battery that is mounted in the floor. The battery has 100 kilowatt hours capacity, such as, for example, in an EQS, but it weighs less, it needs less room, so it's ready to go into a next compact generation car. If we follow the roof line and the back, we see the car almost has a teardrop shape. Not as extreme as the aerodynamic gurus might like it to achieve an even better drag coefficient, but big enough to get the air efficiency up compared to an EQS or an EQE. And we have this really long tail that could even be extended by exiting the diffuser. That is electrically, I show you later in the inside, that can come out for 10, 15 centimeters. And we have this harsh and strong undercut here that also cuts the airflow, makes this car better, makes it more efficient and let it drive faster away. One more detail to show how serious they've been with the drag coefficient. They even sacrificed their three-pointed star. Usually that's a silver silhouette. In this case, it's just a sticker. The, the EQXX road. is not only a future technology device, no, it also shows the future of the Mercedes infotainment system MBUX. We have the next generation hyperscreen spanning from A pillar to A pillar. We have new graphics, we have a new voice control, and we have lots of detailed information that shows us how the car really works. So if you press the car and move your finger a little, the car becomes bigger and you can really see what energy consumption is and you can go into the details. For example, you can see the harvest of the sun since the car has solar panels. We already collected 2000 watt hours or two kilowatt hours. That's good for 20, 25 kilometers. The forecast for the day is 2.3 kilowatt hours making use of solar energy and all that is done in real time 3d animated and whatever you do with the car the car shows so you have a range prognosis you can switch on or off the diffuser and if you put the brake lights even those will activate the graphics if you indicate the car will show the indicator so really fancy graphics really cool created and programmed and also part 
of the efficiency because this screen for the first time ever can blacken out almost 4000 pixels and save energy as well. So only the points that are really needed are lit up, the rest stays dark and dark means no energy and that means further drive. Until now only Mercedes engineers were able to drive that car. This is one of the first public test drives of the EQXX. Instead of going to Goodwood or to Cassis, we're just driving on the proving ground in the Black Forest. But at least we're driving and driving is totally easy. It is an EV, it has the standard operating functions. So a steering wheel somehow similar to the one of the EQS and the shifter and indicator as we know it from EQA. So the step into the future is quite easy. Atmosphere in the car, a bit more futuristic due to the design. We have all the rose gold that we know from the Mercedes EQ family, especially when it's a show car. And since the car is so slim and sleek, it is a bit narrow inside. So headroom is not the biggest. And if I look towards the back, yes, it is officially a four seater, but grown ups in the back, I think they have to improve that if they really want to make it a long distance car for four adults. Talking about the drive, it is a very natural feeling, even if that is a prototype and even if it has the technology of tomorrow, it feels quite present and it's just an ordinary drive and it doesn't make too much difference driving an EQXX or an EQE that I used on my trip into the Black Forest. But there are some differences. Yes, we still have one motor at the back, no in-wheel motors, no nothing, a very efficient motor at the back. It once was stated it has 150 kilowatts during development. The engineers found 30 additional kilowatts. So now we're talking about 180 kilowatts, which is enough power to get a pretty good acceleration, but top speed is limited to 140 kilometers per hour, making it the slowest of the EQ family. But if you wanna have range, you can't speed too much. Another difference to the EQ models that we have on the road is the regen braking. Usually you have three steps, plus, neutral and minus. In this case, we have one more to each side. So we can coast with regen plus plus, which means the car is sailing for miles and miles without losing speed. Or we can regen with minus minus, which really gives you a feeling of braking and really allows you the one pedal drive. And if you lift your foot, you somehow feel it almost in your belt. It's not an emergency brake, but it is a decent kind of braking where it really slows you down and where you can really feel the car gains its energy. Since this prototype costs a fortune, I'm not allowed to drive alone. I have a watchdog next to me, Julien Pillers, an engineer that was part of the team from the start. And since I have the watchdog with me, why not ask him some questions and get some explanations? So what is the purpose of this vehicle besides just breaking the efficiency record? So we are not only having this vehicle, we are having a complete technology program where we are developing technology for future Mercedes-Benz EV cars. With this vehicle, we had the clear goal to develop a vehicle that has got uh, more than 1,000 kilometers of range and that has got a consumption of less than 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. And for us engineers, it is something where we can learn uh, for future serial cars of Mercedes-Benz. Okay, so you not only took rocket science and make it road going, but you always had the production car in mind. and. Does that influence the future development of cars? Does that speed up the process? As you told me, it's been only half a year from the first rollout to that proving trip to, to Cassis. Is that the time frame we can expect from new models? And why do you need to be faster than before? Is it just because of the money or is it also for other reasons? With EVs, you can uh, create a lot of learnings in a short time because the technology is comparably new compared with ICE engines. So this is why we started this technology program at Mercedes-Benz, to learn in a fast way. Uh, we are not able to do a serial development in this short time, but it is a really good foundation to learn for our serial cars. and. Uh, 
things that we have learned from this project will find its way to the MMA project, which is a serial development project for future Mercedes-Benz electric cars. And since you're so fast now, meaning MMA is how far ahead? Uh, the MMA cars are going to be released to market approximately 2025. Okay, then I'm quite curious what to see and keep in memory this car to see how much of this car will influence the future MMA models. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on that first test drive with the new Mercedes EQXX and I fear it will be the last one as well because even if this car already clocked more than 15,000 kilometers, which is more than any other research vehicle of Mercedes ever did, not to talk about the show cars that usually just roll on a stage and go back into the museum, I think I will never drive that vehicle again and most probably we will never see it again because this car is banned and it's used on the test and proving grounds of the company in the hidden atmosphere of the engineers because this is not only a showpiece it is a working tool and everyone you ask tells you this car holds the technology of the future MMA models. MMA is the Mercedes modular architecture for future EVs and seen it from that point I might well drive it again just with a different shape different package different configuration this car will become the next generation EQE or EQC.